Please welcome Safra Katz. Fantastic. What a joy to see you all. And how wonderful it is to be here in London. Thank you. On behalf of Oracle, all my employees and our partners, thank you for sharing with us the most precious resource you have, which is your time. I hope that you feel when you leave Oracle Open World that has been time well spent. During the show, we will share with you our newest technologies and our best thinking on how to truly do a digital transformation. So many of you, so many of us, are all going through constant change, increasing competition, and our drive to grow and serve our customers and our citizens and our employees better. I want to start really by telling you a little bit about our story and then maybe focus in on some of the newest technologies. Because though I joined Oracle 21 years ago, I was brought, you know, I came in to do what we thought, what Larry Ellison thought, was a digital, no, he thought it was an IT transformation of Oracle. He thought it was a big, giant IT project where we would bring together our systems. What we very soon realized is that it was, in fact, our first digital transformation. What we didn't know at the time, and I suspect some many of you already do know, is that though transformations start, in fact, the truest transformation never ends. That in fact, as new technologies become available, they allow the companies to bring them in and leverage them for greater strength, for better customer understanding, for better financial and employee decisions. And that's really where we find ourselves now. Because many years ago, and I'm sure none of you have had to go through this, but you have, we discovered that our own data was fragmented that our systems were separate, that every bit of our business was sub-optimized. And first, we figured out what our true assets were, and we started to bring them together. And what immediately happened was we stopped duplicating effort. And we released an absolute fortune in resources at the time so that we could invest in our business. But 20 years ago, the technology was nowhere near where it is today. Because now we are truly in a position to leverage the data. And it is leveraged throughout the technology stack, whether it's in the infrastructure, where AI is working through mountains of data, constantly keeping track of any attempted security hacks, and is constantly patching and upgrading these systems without any human intervention, or whether it's data understanding our customers better and making sure that they have what they need when they need it. And it's all throughout the technology stack that the newest technologies, the true AI that is driven by enormous amounts of data 
run through inexpensive and easily accessible computing resources can bring company after company to their highest and most competitive use. We here at Open World, we have a whole area where we share with you the very, the very uh, journey we were on. Because though our transformation started in 1999, and can you imagine a worse time to try to bring about change? It was the absolute height of the internet bubble. It was as if money flew through the door. And when Larry and I decided that everything had to change at Oracle, you can only imagine how many people were saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And I'm sure many of you in this time now are going through periods where people are saying, no, 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 I'm willing to change, but I'd much rather not. It ain't broke, don't fix it. And what you realize is that the hardest part of these transformation is often not the computers, not the software, but the entire rethinking of how to operate in a modern global environment where you have to use your resources constantly to leverage your business, and you can't waste those resources duplicating effort or working in silos or sub-optimizing your business. Now, for us, our, our whole journey started in rebuilding our entire product line. And can you imagine a decision made Gee, almost 16 years ago now, I think, after we acquired PeopleSoft, that we had to be ready for this business online. Little did we even know about the word cloud. It had not been coined yet. And yet, Larry Ellison, our founder, our chairman, our chief technology officer, knew that it did that it made compelling sense to run technology in high-powered systems so that our customers, all of you, did not have to figure out the different combinations of technologies to run your business. And so we started by rewriting our entire platform, whether it was the database, putting in many features a lot of you now use and know about, multi-tenancy, in-memory, real application clusters, uh, and now Exadata, all of these important, incredibly important uh, features that also secure these systems. We rewrote the entire middleware stack, and then, of course, we rewrote all of the applications. And we ourselves, again, a lot of this before the word cloud was even coined, we knew our responsibility for this technology was much, much higher because we know that really the crown jewels, the most important data in your business or in your government are in our systems. And not only must we write technology that performs very, very fast, but is also scalable, but we must secure it. It is absolutely critical. There is no point in putting it in the system unless you can guarantee that it is secure. And this, some people call us paranoid, I call us serious. This level of focus on security led us to a second generation cloud that is like no other. 
You see, the first generation cloud is all of your workloads and the network run on the same processor. And that means that potentially a workload from either a nosy or a noisy neighbor could ride along from one processor to the next. That wasn't good enough for your data in our view. And my colleagues will share with you the deep differences, but just simplifying it, you have to understand your data is in this processor, in this computer, and our network, not even connected to the internet, is running separately. In fact, we can't even see your data. Talk about security. Now, who would even think of an architecture like that? I'll tell you, people who understand the importance and the criticality of the security and the performance of your data. And now, we are in a position here at Oracle, this is a very, very exciting time for us because we feel like an overnight success 15 years in the making. And for us, what we experience ourselves is the benefits of running in the, for us in the public cloud now, though we have options for many of our customers who want to have uh, our cloud on their premise, most of our customers, and by the way, including ourselves, we run in the public cloud, and we are confident that it is both secure and performant for us. We ourselves moved entirely to the public cloud and got the benefits of it. But the true benefits of having a digital enterprise is ultimately being able to use the vast quantities of data to better support you, your customers. And for us, this implementing AI and machine learning is not just a technology that sits on the side for esoteric analyses. We've implemented machine learning throughout our technology stack. Our HCM allows us to, to understand which employees are doing a remarkable job and, ha and need to be uh, rewarded. Our AI allows us to review expense accounts in a way that could never be done manually. By the way, the machine learning in our financial systems allows us to not only close our books and record our earnings and results, but to actually file them with the federal regulators in 11 or 12 days. Again, virtually no manual entries, a constant review of the systems to make sure that we're doing the right thing. What we've tried to do with machine learning, whether it's in defending autonomous database, imagine the Oracle database, probably virtually every one of you storing your most important data in it, now autonomous, self-patching, self-healing, having machine learning system constantly reviewing it and upgrading it without taking it down the true holy grail in running systems, constantly upgraded. And then moving up the stack, our applications. Imagine 
these systems run our operation, 100 plus countries around the world, upgraded every 90 days. And it's interesting because some of you have asked me about other companies that purport to have a cloud. And I ask you, just ask two questions. Are you getting new features every 90 days? If not, you're not truly in the cloud. And imagine those new features come and you're upgraded and patched without you doing anything. That's arm job. And then ask again, are you all on the same code line? Is every customer on the identical code line? If the answer is yes, like with Fusion, then you're in the cloud. If the answer is no, Let's call that faux cloud, because that's what they're talking about. That's called hosting. I remember that from the 20th century. This is the 21st century. This is the century where your systems are collecting data, and they're analyzing data, and they're giving you insights about your employees, about your customers, about your suppliers, about your partners, about your citizens that help you do a better job. And I, I do encourage you to go to the Oracle at Oracle presentations, because though some of them will be a little technical presentations, they will also focus on how to use best practices, how to simplify your business, how to really leverage the data that is in your systems to make you better, more successful, more competitive, and spend significantly less. Our mission, our real mission, is to have you benefit from these systems so you can devote your resources to the things that make you better, not to patching databases or accounting clerks. I mean, for us, we have, we have, in adoption of our own technology, we've literally changed our businesses. We've, we've sped up the clock. Things that would take weeks, like supply chain planning, now take an hour closing books, all of the financial manual entries, all of the reporting, all those things that used to take days, now is instantaneous. Now analytics run through our systems to help us make better financial decisions. I have to say, the insights that we have gotten from running our business show up in our financial statements. The profitability, the ability to invest nearly $6 billion a year in R&D to constantly make these systems better is only possible because of our, our own ongoing transformation. We had to change our whole company for the cloud because we understood that no longer do we sell you hardware and software and say, good luck with that. It's now our job to serve you. So we build our systems knowing that we will run them for you. And that's been a real change, and I hope you feel it. I hope you, you can really see it. I think that ultimately, for us, our greatest success is when we see you successful. I see I have a number of friends out here in the audience who have gone through this journey, and I'm, I'm thrilled that they're going to be here to share it with you. I want to ultimately introduce right now one of our customers. 
what really brings a digital transformation to life is hearing from one of our customers on how they've used the technology to improve their business and how critical it has been to making them more competitive. I'd like to welcome Massimiliano Pogliani from Ili Cafe. I hope some of you have already tasted some of the world's best coffee. I'd like him to come join me and share his vision on how you unlock insights using technology to make your company better. Ma Max, please join me. Please have a seat. Thank you. Oh, welcome to Oracle Open World. And first, let me thank you so much. And before we get started, though, I know you probably don't need to tell many of these people about Ely Cafe. Share with us the history a little bit. Wow. So it's impressive, the audience. Thank it's you for inviting me. Well, uh, our story started. Uh, in 1933, so 87 years ago, when our founder, Francesco Illy, decided to start up a company in Trieste, which is, you know, east of Venice, for those who don't know where Trieste is, yeah. and based on a very simple idea, on a dream that he had, I want to offer the greatest coffee to the world. <laughs> well, 87 years later, that's Illy Cafe today. But what does it mean to offer the greatest coffee to the world? It means to you know, try to delight the lovers of quality of life, of course, with the best coffee nature can provide, enhanced by the best available technology, sustainable practices, and the pursuit of beauty in everything we do. This is, this is key. So if you want to summarize Illy Cafe in three words, you say good, goodness, and beauty. So good stands for you know, the, our quest for the best possible product. We are obsessed about quality, passionately obsessed. Goodness, of course, we want to be a good company. So this is our enduring commitment to sustainability, sustainable practices from an economical, social, and environmental point of view. And of course, beauty, because it's the, our link with the world of aesthetics, our heart, which is surrounding our, our product and enhancing uh, the experience. Well, so today we are a global brand. We are present in more than 140 countries. We, we sell to over 100,000 customers uh, worldwide across five continents. We have uh, yeah, a little bit more than 7 million cups of Illy coffee consumed every day. A day. So this is key because there are 7 million potential interaction with customers and potential way to disappoint or delight them. So here, technology and digital is very, very important for us to manage this uh, transaction and this interaction with our customers. Well, share with us a little bit about the main challenges and business drivers as CEO at Ely Cafe, driving your technology decisions. Well, I think, you know, we are living, we know, you mentioned that in a very, you know, complex, ever-changing world. So. How can you keep this innovative, agile spirit of a startup when you are 87 years old? So that's the, the key main challenge I have. And especially when dealing with technology, I believe that you really have to be on top of that as the CEO and really sponsoring that from the top. Of course, I'm not a native digital. I'm not 20 years old. But so I think I have to learn that and embrace that. So leading by example, so showing that that it's not something, it's something that's going to help the way we work, although we have to change the way we approach businesses and processes is important. So the, the, the sponsorship from the top is the key for me. Uh, and then we, but we need to also be aware that since we build our success based on the absolute quality of the product, we don't have to be focused only on the product, but keep the customer and the, the consumer at the center. And that is uh, that's important to manage all the data we have about our customers and consumers. And so to go beyond the traditional channels and not think the business as, I don't know, online, B2B, Oreca, et cetera, but putting the customer in the center and the business is around the customer. So they're all different touch points. Today, you can, you know, 
see Ili Cafe on the digital uh, um, or in a physical store, in a supermarket, you have to orchestrate and manage this journey. And here you need to really manage a lot of, a lot of data. At the same time, you have to keep, uh, since our our you know, committed to sustainability to keep a focus on how we run the operation and the sustainability metrics and making sure that what we do is really creating and generating long-term value for all the stakeholders along across the value chain, so from the bin uh, to the cap. So this is very, very complex. So I see the role in this of a CEO particularly no more like the old traditional one man at the top showing the direction everybody's following. So this is old stuff. You know, I think the CEO has a key role to be, the, I say, the activator of the collective intelligence of his human capital, because alone I cannot make it. So I need all the intelligence of all my people all together to have a chance to face, to face this complexity and to, you know, to be ahead, to stay ahead of the competition. So that's, that's key for us. It's amazing, and this is so right, because it is a team, and though you direct it, it everyone's got to be thinking about these issues. Can you share with the audience how you, how you and Oracle work together to drive both internally with your employees and externally with your customers? Well, you know, we are, we are not only a family business, professionally managed, but we are a big family ourselves. So we have people working with us since many, many years. So is, is, uh, you know, he's always trying to find the balance between this family feeling and the cultural shift that needs to be done when you embrace a digital transformation. So for us, we start with, as I said before, with people. Without my team, I cannot do anything. <laughs> so for us, we implemented the Oracle ACM module. And that was key, not only, well, starting from the beginning, only to answer how many people works for you, how many men. You know, just the anagraphics was a big step ahead, being present you know, in many, many countries. Uh, but that movie from that, having a single source of information about your talents, allow you, you know, to manage them better, you know, not only, you know, traditional things like payroll and benefit packages, but also performance management, identify and track talents, job posting, recruiter and tracking, succession planning, this, this is key. And we have implemented this solution is in less than two years. So, of course, starting from the headquarter in Trieste, and then we, we move to all our subsidiary, US, uh, uh, Europe and China uh, as well. So. We are really leveraging the 1,000, over 1,300 people working for us because if you know a lot about your team and your people, then you can really push cross-fertilizing initiatives. You can really you know, manage their career better. You know there are what they like, what they did, and even their personal story are important to us being a, a family business. And on the other side, if you talk about the customer side, of course, uh, we, we implemented the Oracle Customer Experience Cloud, where we manage uh, our customer service, which is the direct voice we have with our, with our customer, with, uh, and also the CRM activity with the responses model. Even with the Oracle Digital System, we developed the, the chatbot, so you have also a way to interact with us. So several different things where Technology is always behind the scene, but it's always been focused in improving the relationship we have with our client and our customers. And where is the future? Where do you well, see us <laughs> moving next together? Well, uh, our story, love story, became many, many years ago because we implemented the back in 2005, Oracle now, JDE words. We managed with JDE all the core processes at the headquarters, and then we roll it out to all our, our subsidiary. Then we say the customer experience uh, cloud module, ACM. I believe that in the future, more and more cloud solution will be key for us because uh, I believe they put the focus, they shift the focus away from technology implementation so I can focus myself and my team in the value creation in the, on the business. And for example, as I was mentioning for or with Oracle ACM, I can focus on developing my team because those are the ones making possible offering the greatest coffee experience to the world. So I need to take care of them and not take care about implementation of technology. So and fast moving and you know, uh, updates, the, these are all things belonging to the past. You take care of that. It's perfectly said, exactly right. Take all of that 
away from wasting your resources and your time so you can focus on your customers yes. and your employees making your customers more successful. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I want to make sure all of you know that Ely Cafe <laughs> is providing coffee in the lounges and I encourage you to taste the world's best coffee and, and enjoy it. And I want to also to conclude, I want to conclude by thanking Deloitte, Oracle Open World Europe's to top global sponsor. Deloitte is Oracle's number one SA SI partner in several key cloud technologies. They are our, our global cloud transformation partner with 28,000 trained consultants. Deloitte has hundreds of Oracle Cloud implementations and they can help you do what I believe is some of the hardest part of transformation, which is the change management in addition to implementing our technology. They're working very closely with us successfully, making all of you successful. So thank you, thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Deloitte, and uh, all of you, I want to thank you again for joining us for Oracle Open World Europe. Thank you. Thank you.